Hello, and welcome back to our series of videos on intellectual property rights. Now, we're going to be talking about how we acquire a trademark, how we acquire rights in a trademark. There's really two ways, and we'll talk about them in a little bit of detail very soon. But first, my name's Jeff Kaiser, and I'm an attorney from the United States that's been practicing for a very long time. I'm also a legal English teacher and I've taught people from around the world how to use English in their law practice to become better lawyers, better arguers, better writers, and importantly, better speakers. I am all about giving people the confidence in English that they might be lacking. And I hope that I can help, help you along that journey as well. So how do, we, how do we acquire a trademark? How do we get it? Like I said, there's really two ways. First, we simply have to be the first to use the trademark in commerce. If we use it first, it's ours. Or we can be the first to register the mark with the USPTO. Again, that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Now, that sounds contradictory, right? If we're the first to use it in commerce and somebody else comes along and registers it, there's a conflict. Well, we've got that all figured out. And, and, and really, what's important here is that registration gives you the evidence to, def to defend your trademark. If you're simply using it in commerce, proving when you started using it can be difficult. Now, we also have to remember that descriptive trademarks, like we discussed in the last session, they only qualify for protection only after they have acquired that secondary meaning. So there might be an overlap where we use it, then it develops that secondary meaning and then we can register it. It's a little complicated, I agree, but I hope you're with me so far. If we use a trademark in commerce, meaning that we have packaged our, our goods and we're selling it to people, then that trademark has defendable rights in it. If you are the first person to sell Lucky Brand Bubblegum to the public, you have acquired priority to use that mark in connection with the sale of bubblegum. Assuming, of course, that the mark otherwise qualifies for trademark protection. But it's that easy. If you are the first to sell that brand, it's yours. The priority is limited, though, to the ge geographic area where you sell the gum. This kind of makes sense. So if you were to sell pizza in Boston, Massachusetts, under the name Broadway Pizza, you could probably stop others in that geographic area from opening up a Broadway, Broadway Pizza. But, but if you wanted to enforce those rights in Los Angeles or New York or anywhere else, you probably couldn't stop them. That's, that's the real distinction between being first in commerce and registering, is that you're limited by geography. Now, the other way to do this is to register it. This gives you the right to use that mark nationwide, even if you never go there, even if you never sell your Lucky Brand Bubblegum or your Broadway Pizza anywhere else. It's nationwide, coast to coast. When that happens, they if somebody else were to do the, open a Broadway Pizza, for example, they would be infringing on your trademark and you could pursue them in court. One question I get all the time is whether a trademark can be lost. And the answer is yes, it absolutely can. There are four primary ways that we can, 
that we can lose our trademark. One, we can abandon it. We can, we can just stop using it and over, over time, it becomes almost like it's in the public domain. You see this in a lot of old timey signs that are reprinted for sale. Those trademarks might still exist on paper, but since they haven't been actively used, they are considered abandoned. A trademark can also be lost if we improperly license or assign them to someone else. They can be spread around the world in a way if we don't have our contracts in line. And that can also basically kill our, our trademark rights. And the final way, and I mentioned this in another video, is the trademarks can become generic, like Xerox, for example. It's so commonly used as, as, as a term to uh, photocopy something that it's lost its, its independent meaning. When we say to Xerox something, we no longer think of the company. We think of a photocopy. That might seem very unfair to that company, and I, I, I feel that as well. But it, this is how the law has developed, and it's the way it is. So yes, abandonment is abandonment takes place when the trademark is no longer used and the owner has an intent not to resume its use. This intent is often inferred from the from the situations. Uh, Non-use for three years is a prima facie rule of evidence, but it could be less and it may require more. Um, one example of this happening is um, the Brooklyn Dodgers were a baseball team in New York in the and the, in the 1950s they moved to Los Angeles. So while the Los Angeles Dodgers absolutely has a strong and valid trademark, they stopped using the Brooklyn Dodgers trademark at all for a long period of time. As such, an American federal court said that they no longer own the rights to Brooklyn Dodgers. Now, does anybody own the rights to Brooklyn Dodgers? I don't, want, I don't have any information on that, but I do know that the Los Angeles Dodgers do not. They can also be lost through genericity. It's a strange word, but it means to make something generic. And I've already just already described this in a way that when a word becomes generic, when the public stops connecting that word to the product or the brand. Thermos is a great example of this. And there have been Supreme Court cases on the subject that answer, answer it to be a generic term, even though it used to be a brand. It is now commonly known as any one of these jugs that keeps your coffee hot or your cold drink cold. This is also the case with aspirin or cellophane. They're generic terms and they don't have a trademark anymore. Like I said, it might be unfair, but that's the way the law works sometimes. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for spending the day with me. I hope you are getting something out of these and I hope that you find it as fascinating a subject as I do. Next time, we're going to be talking about trademark infringement. See you soon.